Welcome, Sunrise, to another Wednesday Bible study. I do pray that this day finds you well and encouraged. I am very encouraged in the fact that uh, God has given us not only life, uh, but he's given us the ability to make the best out of every situation that we go through. I'm also encouraged that it looks as though our state is, is kind of trying to open back up and, and get back on track. Uh, I pray that that transcends into our worship uh, our target, uh, as I sent out a, a pastor's blog just this past week, our target date is May 3rd to try to get back to some form of worship uh, and just be in prayer about that, that, that we can be able to uh, put something together to where we can start to slowly get back together uh, on a regular basis. Our prayer walk will be coming up the first Saturday in May. I do plan on doing that prayer walk, and so uh, just, just be in prayer about that as well. Uh, but I'm also encouraged tonight because we're beginning a new Bible study. Last week, if you'll remember, I encouraged you uh, to go back and, and look at and read uh, Psalm 119. And in Psalm 119, I asked that you, uh, there were certain phrases and words that I, I pointed out in the study. And I asked you to, to underline those or highlight those or write those down and go back and see what God is trying to, to tell us. When it comes to his word, his command, his precepts, his statutes, his testimonies, and all of those things. Well, I began to think about that and pray upon that this, this past week. And so what we're going to do in this Bible study, and this Bible study is called Life According to God's Word. Life According to God's Word. There's really no other way to really live an abundant life apart from God's Word. We can be believers and Christians and still go through this life and really just half live the life that God wants us to have simply because we're not living it according to his word. And so uh, as I began to look at that, God really pressed upon my heart to go back and let's just do a Bible study on Psalm 119. If you remember a few years ago when we did Psalm 51, and it took us nine months just to get through uh, Psalm 51 because we dissected the words and we dissected the verses and, and what God was trying to tell us. And we got a lot, a lot of good meat out of that and a lot of good things that blessed our heart in a lot of ways, changed a lot of our lives uh, by having our Psalm 51 moment. This is Psalm 119. It is broken up in a lot of different sections, and we'll cover that. Tonight is kind of more of an overview uh, of, of Psalm 119, and basically I'm just going to give you three things that I drew out of the essence of, of 119, and we're going to get to that. But first of all, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, as we always do, and, and have your praise reports and your prayer requests. I know that there are many. We've been sending some out. Uh, we've had uh, some... A family, a church family members to pass away. Some are in the hospital, um, have a report of, of some with some illnesses. So whatever your prayer request is, or maybe you have a praise tonight, just lift up that praise. Uh, perhaps you have an unspoken. We, we often have many unspokens here at Sunrise, and that just means that uh, God knows, even if we don't speak it, uh, God knows, and so we partner with each other in prayer. Uh, in that time as well. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight, and then we're just going to look at two or three things in, in Psalm 119 to kind of get us going. Like I said, this is just pretty much an overview tonight of, of what we're going to expect in Psalm 119. But I want you to continue to dig in 119. I want you to, to, to be able to highlight and pull those uh, things out that we talked about and find out what God is trying to speak to you through that. God is sharpening us he, he is sending us out to do, do a marvelous work. We are not a church that just wants to sit idle and take up space. We are a church body who wants to be active for the Lord. So let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight, and then we'll see what God has for us. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, tonight that your mercy uh, endures forever. Father, we thank you that through all of the trials and tribulations of life, you are still God to us. There is nothing that comes to us or against us without your knowledge. Father, we thank you for the gift of grace, the gift of mercy. We also, Lord, thank you for the power that you 
give to the church, the protection that you give, the provisions and the prosperity that comes. I'm not just talking about riches. I'm talking about spiritual prosperity that you bring to the church. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the purpose and the power and, and the promises that you give the church. Father, we lift up every heartache. We lift up every crisis. We heal lift up every cancer issue. We lift up all of those who are, who are struggling with COVID-19. We praise you for all the ones that are well and have been uh, delivered from that dreaded disease. And we pray for the families, Lord, of those that uh, did not make it through that struggle and have gone on. Father, we pray over those as well. Father, we cover this land from sea to shining sea and all across the world. Father, we speak life and not death. We speak good and not evil. We speak prosperity and not, not pity. Father, we, we, we claim the holy word of God. Whatever you say, whatever you speak, whatever you are, whoever you are, we want it all, Lord. And we want it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we claim victory over this disease. We claim victory over financial hardships. We claim victory over health issues. We claim victory, Father, over any marriage or relationships that may be struggling through this time. Father, we pray and claim victory over those that are lost and need to be saved, those that are saved and need to start acting like it. Whatever the case may be, Father, we lift up your holy name because your word says that if we lift you up, you will draw all men into yourself. So draw, Lord Jesus, draw. And, and bless this Bible study tonight as only you can. In Jesus' wonderful, precious, and holy name we do pray. Amen and amen. Psalm 119 is so rich, it's so long, it's so diverse. But it all centers around one main thing. And that is God's word. I'm here to tell you right now, and I know you know this, and I don't need to get up on my spiritual soapbox tonight, but you know this to be true. Every situation in this world can be solved if people would just return to God's word. If we would just get over ourselves and over our flesh and over our worldly desires and say, whatever you want, God, thus saith the Lord, whatever you want for our lives is what we want. If we would return to God in his word, I guarantee you, based on his word, not my opinion, but based on his word, we shall have victory. We shall have those things which we ask for. The Lord says you have not because you ask not. And you, and you don't ask right. Sometimes you ask amiss. And, and, and all of these things are struggles for us because we will not rely upon the word. First of all, we don't take the time to know it. And then when we know it, we don't take the time to heed it. And then once we heed it, we, then we begin to learn how to make our lives represent the word. Oh, I, I think that's speaking to somebody tonight. Now, Psalm 119, we know that it's going to change our lives because it starts out with the word blessed. I love the word blessed. Often when I'm texting somebody back or sending an email, you, you will often see at the bottom, be blessed, Pastor Eddie. And, and that's just a, a, a phrase that I picked up many years ago when I began to sign things, be blessed, because it, what it means is is that you are blessed if you know God through his son, Jesus Christ, and there are indwelt with the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, you are blessed. But the key is being blessed, or in other words, living like you're blessed. So that's what be blessed means when you see that come to pass. So like I said last week, I challenged the class to dive into 119. In it, we find the pathway to a life with God. If, listen, if we want to really have a life with God, we got to rely on what he says. He is like our general in the military. I may have used this analogy before, but you know, if the general gives you an order for today and you begin to carry out that order for today and it goes well 
And the reason it goes well is the general knows what he's talking about. He's done the research. He's done the homework. He has the experience. He knows the pros and cons and the pitfalls and the, and the victories and all of that. So when he gives you an order, he knows what he's talking about. And you follow that order to the, to the letter and guess what? Victory belongs to you because you did what the general said and it worked out the way he wanted it to and the way he told you he would. But what about the next day? If you don't go back to the general and get your marching orders for that day, then the only other option is for you to do your own thing, to walk your own way, to make up your own mind, to form your own opinions. And old oh, church, could you could, I, could somebody just say hallelujah tonight that we, we get in the most trouble when we start to make our own plans and do it our own way. And so tonight we, we're going to learn up more uh, in Psalm 119. We're going to learn more about God's character. We're going to learn more about uh, what he, what his will for our lives is, what his expectations for us are. God has expectations from us. Listen, he made us in his own image. So that lets me know he has great expectation for his creation, for his people. And so tonight... We're going to dive into that, uh, but when, when we talk about it being God's word that leads us and guides us, you know, Paul wrote to the Philippians something very similar. Let me read it to you in Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 16. He says this, he says, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain neither labored in vain. Did y'all get a hold of that? Let, let me break that down. Th th this phrase, holding forth, that means to retain or to pay close attention to. So Paul says this, basically he's saying, listen, I have retained in my spirit, not just in my head, in my heart and in my spirit. We're going to get to that here in just a minute. In my heart and in my spirit, I have paid attention and retained the word of life, which is the word of God. Why? Why, why did I say it was so important for me to hold on to God's word? He said that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, knowing that everything I've done in my life has not been in vain. In other words, that is my reward. My reward is when I get to the end of my life and God can say, you held close to my word. What I told you and instructed you to do to the best of your ability, you did that. And that is why your reward is so great. Listen, not just your crowns and glory, but let me tell you something. When you look back behind you and you see all the people that have been influenced by your life, when they've been influenced by your life, now listen, good and bad, let's do a, let's do a spiritual checkup right now while we're teaching this, okay? We may divert a little bit, but let's just get on the word the way it ought to be got on to. And we influence people, good and bad, in our lives. And we need to do a spiritual check to say, listen, what kind of seed am I sowing in my life when my life is over and God has taken me out of this world. I'm going to leave behind people who were influenced by my life, Paul said. So I held fast to God's word, knowing that when Jesus came for me, I could rejoice in the fact that he saw me ooh, mm, faithful in his word. And when I was faithful in his word, then when I'm gone, there will be others like Timothy and Barnabas and Silas and all these others that, that are faithful to the word because somehow they saw something in me. And that's what it's all about, church. That's the essence of Psalm 119. God is saying, listen, you're building a legacy. You're building a life. You're building a life that's going to keep living long after you're gone. So build it on the word. Don't build it on your opinions. Don't build it on your ego. Don't build it on your, on your, your own uh, shortcomings or pitfalls or your, your accolades and your accomplishments. Don't build it on what you have done physically. Let the people say, that 
person was a spiritual person. That person sowed things into my life that I'm the better for. Ooh, thank you, Jesus, for bringing that out tonight. So whew, let's look at a few things in Psalm 119 that teaches us about life according to God's word. This, like I said, this is just an overview. This is just three things tonight that I believe is an overview of what we're going to find in 119 in, in some, uh, some way or another. First of all, it lets us know that the word has a cleansing power. Aren't you, aren't you happy about that tonight? That God's word has the ability to cleanse us. The Bible says that it cleanses us, that God has the ability to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Listen to Psalm 119, verses 9, 10, and 11. And remember, you can uh, download these or print these out under our Wednesday Bible study notes. You can go to that on our website. Uh, you'll have them there. You can print them out, or you can just read along in your word. Psalm 119, 9, 10, and 11 says this. Wherewithal, sh how well, shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Y'all see that? Verse 10 says, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Verse number 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Look back up here at verse number 9. Listen, there is a desire to be clean before God from the writer here because he says, basically, wherewithal or how shall a young man cleanse his ways? Lord, I want to know how can I be clean? How can I be clean before you and, and, and rid of all of this stuff that somehow every day, y'all know it's true, every day gets, gets on me or around me and just seems to bring me down or take me in a direction I don't want to go. Lord, I need, to, I need you to help me understand how can I be clean? He said by taking heed, paying attention, just like Paul wrote, taking heed according to, to thy word. I, I, I got written down here that, that there is a formula to, to becoming clean before God. And I've always looked at it like this. It's like, it's like a glass and I've had something in it. Maybe I've had uh, a Coke or maybe it's a coffee cup and you've had coffee in it. And you know how coffee sometimes, if you leave it there too long, it can leave a stain. Oh, hallelujah. I think that's got some spiritual implication. But, but, but if you got coffee in that cup, let's just do that one. And, and you let it sit too long, it begins to kind of stain on you, if you will. But, but, but before that cup can be clean, first of all, it has to be emptied. Right? It has to be emptied. And then once it's emptied, then it has to be cleansed. In other words, you can't just empty it. You got to stick it in and put a little soap in it and do a little cleaning. It may even have to go through the dishwasher, amen, and, and, and get that sterilization. But, but, but you've got to get that residue out of there. It's not enough just to empty it because when you empty it, how many of you know when you set it back down and you come back the next day, it's still stained on the inside because the residue was never cleaned out. But once you clean it, now you're able to fill it. Woo! To fill it with what you really want to go in there next. Amen? That, isn't that the same way with us spiritually? We got to get before God, hallelujah, and say, Lord, empty me of me. Empty me of myself. And then cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Get every bit of residue out of there. Then you are able to fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. That can only come, church, through the power of of the word. Listen to what Psalm 119 verse 58 says. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. If y'all have done any 119 much at all, you'll know right now the, the phrase thy word is in there a whole lot of times. And that's because it is that important. The second thing I want to show you this, today is... Uh, in Psalm 119, what we're going to see is that the word has the ability to quicken us. Now, that word quicken means to make alive or to strengthen us in the word. 
How many of you have ever believed this and, and know this to be true? That the, the longer you stay in the word, the more you read the word, the stronger spiritually you seem to get. And when you begin to get in the word, it isn't long before you begin to pray the word. And I'm here to say hallelujah tonight. The devil hates the word, but he really hates when we begin to speak and pray the word. So if you really want to get the devil fleeing from you, not only claim the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus over your life, but begin to speak the holy word of God and you're going to see him take flight. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he shall flee from thee. That's what James said. We, we get the resisting and the, and the fleeing, but we forget the submitting part. Empty, clean, and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And then you got something right there, I'm telling you. Notice a person with and without the word of God in these next verses here. Psalm 119 verse 25 says this. My soul cleaves unto the dust. That means sticks to. My soul sticks to the dust. Quicken thou me. Watch this. According to thy word. In other words, get me up. I'm stuck. Anybody ever felt stuck? Anybody ever felt stuck in your circumstances, stuck in your life? Just feel like your life's not going anywhere. It's in neutral or you're backing up. The Lord says his word can quicken you and make you alive and get you up. Woo! Look at verse 28. My soul melts for heaviness. That word melts there means weakens. It weakens. So, so the, the flip side of that in 28 is this. Strengthen thou me. According to thy word. Under that word strengthen, I wrote this down, church. Strong and good courage. Isn't that what uh, God told Joshua? He said, be strong and of a good courage. Now listen to what he said. As I was with my servant Moses, so shall I be with you. Now if he made that promise to Joshua, don't you think he would also make that promise to us? As God was with Moses, as God was with Joshua, God shall also be with us. And that is the power of the word. But you know what? If you don't get in the word, you do not get that encouragement from the Lord. Listen to Psalm 119 and verse 50. He says, this is my comfort in my affliction." I know you're not here in the house right now, but wherever you are, just, just, just raise your hand in testimony that sometimes we feel like we're in afflictions. But the Lord says here, this is my comfort. Thy word has quickened me. In other words, in my afflictions, I am comforted by the fact that your word is alive. And if your word is alive, it's alive in me. Why? I ask you to empty me, cleanse me, and then fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Well, listen, if I get filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to get filled with God's word. You can count on that. In Hebrews chapter 4, in verse number 12, Paul writes this. For the word of God is quick, we know that to be alive, and powerful, that is force, and sharper than any two-edged sword. That means it can cut either way. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow. And listen to this. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. In other words, the Lord's word can dissect between good and evil. It can dissect between the, what is of the flesh and what is of the spirit. It can separate. It all is separated by God's word. You want to know if something's right or wrong? Go to the word. You, you want to know if, if the flesh is trying to run your life or the spirit is trying to run your life? It's in the word. And if the word, Holy Spirit is in you, it's going to draw you to the word. You don't have to ask, is this right or wrong? The spirit tells you whether it's right or wrong. Then you go to the word and he lets you know, first of all, it is wrong, why it's wrong, and what we need to do to correct that. God never leaves us orphans in any capacity. I, I, I love the word because the word has the power to convict. And once it convicts, then it can correct. And once it corrects, 
It corrects us through counseling. It instructs us. And once it begins to counsel us, then it isn't long before the conviction will turn to comfort. Y'all see those four C's? It convicts, it corrects, it counsels, and then it comforts. It is all that is, is the so double-edged sword that can cut either way. Let me go on to this third thing today. The Word guides us through life. Psalm 119 is going to show us uh, that the Word has, has a cleansing power. The Word is alive. And also the Word guides us through life. Listen to 119 and one, Psalm 119 and verse 105, one of my very favorites. The Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God inspired me to write this down right here. It says, his word is sufficient for the moment, that's the lamp, and for the path of life, that's the light. He, he can show me what I need for right now, and he can show me what lays out ahead of me. But let me tell you something, I can't see the end. I can only see the daily steps that my Lord, my General, my, my Savior tells me to take. And as long as I take those and he illuminates my path, then, then he'll show me his plan for my life. Listen, I don't have to get up every morning trying to figure out well, what's my plan for my life. God's got my plan. The only thing I got to do is get in his word and listen to his voice and, and pray to him and talk to him along my journey, and he shall direct my path. Isn't that what the word said in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6? It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Listen to our Lord and Savior in John chapter 8 as we close. Verse number 12 says this. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Why is Jesus Christ the light of life? Because John said in, in chapter 1 that he was the word. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of God, full of grace and truth. I hope you look forward to, to the Psalm 119 Bible study. I think it's going to be a good one. What we're going to try to do is take uh, the, the first 10, uh, 10 verses at a time and just go down through the whole psalm until we finish and just dissect it as long as it takes. Uh, I just want to encourage you, continue to pray uh, that, that this, uh, this pandemic and the thing that's going on does not take control of our spiritual well-beings, that we continue to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and everything. Listen, this doesn't catch God by surprise. What we're doing right now is we're building for a huge revival. Once uh, everybody gets back together, we're going to have a revival spirit. We're going to have a revival type situation. And we're just going to trust the Lord and see what he can do. Until we meet again, I just want you to always stay encouraged. Always stay blessed. Continue to pray for one another. Check on one another. And always know that we love you and we care about you. And until we meet again, God bless you.